you need to stop playing Jackal and start playing Doka B, and here's why. What's up guys, my name's Alka, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Doka B in year seven of Rainbow Six Siege. We're gonna go over things like her loadout, what guns you should be using, as well as how to use your gadget, with some various tips along the way, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you some in-game examples, so stick around till the end of the video to see that. All right, so first of all, let's talk about Doka B's loadout. She has the option between the Mark 14 EBR, a very good DMR in my opinion, it has 60 damage, uh, a good enough fire rate if your trigger finger is good enough, and 20 rounds for the capacity. It has a lot of different variations for the attachments that you can run because the recoil is not that hard to control. Personally, I run the vertical grip with muzzle brake, but angled grip is also an option that you can run. Next, she has the Boss G. I wouldn't equip this. This is a two bullet shotgun. It does have 125 damage and it comes with a variety of good scopes. If you're good with this thing, it can be very, very good, but it's just not versatile enough and there's not a lot of things you can do with it, especially if you're bringing the Gon 6 as your secondary. Then you go into her secondary, she has the SMG 12 and the Gon 6. If you have a DMR, having a secondary that's automatic is not a bad idea, but the Gon 6 can break a lot of utility, so personally, that's what I run. This is one of those options where it kind of is just personal preference. If you do make the mistake of running the Boss G, always run the SMG 12 because you have very, very limited ammo on this Boss G unless you're playing extremely reserved. You're always going to want to bring that SMG 12. All right, so I brought you into a custom game to just kind of show you how Doki B works. So Doki B, in terms of like what she does and her role with her team, she's a roam clear. This can be played by a multitude of different people, but normally it's going to be played by your third entry and flex people. So knowing that, what you'd want to do is you'd want to be droned in by your supports, and then you'd go in and start roam clearing immediately. Now, Doki B, Jackal, and Lion are all in the same category in terms of what they do, but their function essentially is just lazy droning. So, if I weren't Doki B and I was just a normal character and I wanted to clear third floor, maybe second floor to go to kitchen, I would drone in like this, and I would spend all this time droning red stairs, I'd spend all this time droning on the CS, heaven, you have all the way into piano, you have all the way into freezer, all of bar, bathroom, Whitehall, bar two, bar one, all of cigar shop, all of heaven, freezer, top white stairs, like it's a lot to clear with just a drone, maybe two if you're not solo queuing, right? So what Doki B, Lion, and Jack will do is they make it extremely easy. Let me shoot this radio. They make it extremely easy to roam clear very efficiently, which is why they're banned so often and ranked. So due to this, what you'll see a lot of players do is they'll go in, they'll drop immediately, and they'll stop calling, right? So Doki B has the ability, something called a logic bomb. And what this does is essentially you activate it and you hear phones on defenders. This is what it sounds like. That's what a phone call sounds like. After a while, you'll see it just deactivates, but defenders can either A, step in a mute jammer, and the effect of the Dokubi call is just done, or they can sit in a little animation and turn their phone off. This does lock them in an animation and a phone does cover like a large portion of their screen. So it's really good to bait into doing kills. Defenders spawn in with phones. Every defender spawns in with phones. This is obviously so that you can call people, but whenever you kill a defender, four last stop standing. They drop a phone like this. As you can see, it's a huge phone, and you can see the icon of the phone through walls and stuff. So if you have somebody like clearing top floor with you and they get a kill across the map, you'll see that phone and you can go over to it and use it. So what does getting phones do? If you hover over the phone and you hold F, Your that's what it does. So now whenever you hack a phone, it just gives you access to all defender camps. So if I press five, I have all of the default cams on attack. So this is extremely huge and it works not only on default cams, but it works on any other cameras, bulletproof cams, echo cams, maestro cams, mozzie drones, anything. So not only is Doka be good for roam clearing, but she has a separate function that allows you to get any defender cams that you want. So that is what separates her from any other roam clear like Lion and Jackal. And that's why you'd wanna pick her up, especially if you're on a team that's helping you roam clear as opposed to any other attackers that you could pick. That's what sets her apart essentially. And this is really, really good if you know they're playing a Valkyrie, if you know that they have any sort of cams at all. This is just really good because a lot of times they have cams on site. So let's say this Maestro cam right here, if I know that they're on the site, having access to this Maestro cam is huge because now I can see into inner bar, bar one, bar two, I can see the CS double, I can see the freezer rotate, I can see all the freezer. It just makes it very easy 
to turn the tides of the round once you have defender camps. So now that you kind of know how to play Dokibi and what you do with her, I'll give you just a little bit of advanced tips that you can do with Dokibi. So if you remember back to the loadout section of the video, I talked about having the DMR over a boss G. Yes, they're both single shot, and because of that, they're not very good weapons, but another reason you'd want to run the DMR over the boss G is because it's extremely good at soft destruction. Jesus Christ, I'm stuttering. So if I want to open this hatch, I don't actually have to use the Gon 6 as my secondary uh, or any soft breaching utility. I can actually just shoot it open like this. And that hatch is gone. It does waste a little bit of bullets, but having that instead of using utility is always going to be really good. It's also good at destroying walls like this. You know? Making kettles, feed holes, whatever you want. I think it even might be good on like vertical play like this. So yeah, you can make pretty large holes pretty easily with a considerable amount of ammo. So just another reason you want to run the DMR over the shotgun and then having a GON6 as your secondary for even more destruction makes Dokibi a very, very versatile operator that I think you should start picking up immediately. And hey, really quickly, before we get into the last part of the video, I just want to mention the Astralis 2022 kit. This comes with a very cool jackal skin in my opinion. I really like the colors that come with it, a really cool headgear, as well as a really cool weapon skin for Jackal's primary. If you buy this bundle, you also get a player card that you can rock on any single operator that you want to. You can find this bundle in the shop if you scroll all the way down and press esports, click on the Astralis profile right here, and click on the Astralis full kit for Jackal, and get yourself some very nice looking skins. All right, so we're in an unranked game. I'm bringing Dokabi on Clubhouse. So one thing that I do want to say whenever you're solo queuing in general, especially playing a roam clearing operator like Dokabi or Jackal, is you want to save your prep phase drone. And saving your drone just looks like not driving it into sight and getting it killed. But it also doesn't mean you just have your drone sitting in sight. Like you want to collect some info. So solo queuing Dokabi, I want to roam clear. That's my main objective. And I want to help my teammates get into the site. A little bit of lag. I want to help my teammates get into site by kind of taking pressure off of the people offsite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go repel onto this roof. I think my teammate shot the default cam for me, so I don't have to worry about that. Jeez, why am I lagging? Break the hatch for the DMR. Okay, now we're gonna do what I talked about, which is we're just gonna drone the initial room that we're gonna drop in. All right, so lodge is clear, files is clear, gold is clear. Sounds like one's top man. He's a master. Hey, one's master. So I'm gonna drop in, hold the angle on the door, find a safe place, then call. I'll give them a call. You have dropped the diffuser. I think I heard a main stairs. I'm not sure. Yeah, main stairs. Cool. Got one. Now, actually, I don't know why I did that. That would be a good cam to keep up because it watches my flank for me and it's not gonna be watching me most of the round. I'm gonna call again because I know zombies here. Okay, it's zombied off. So I'm pretty sure she's in con right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these cams. They do have Valkyrie, so this is really good. Now we have Valk cams. I'm gonna drill myself in. My teammate fell off the roof. That was a pretty good example of what you do as Dokibi. You drop in the initial room after droning it, and then you don't have to worry about droning all the other rooms because you have a phone call. And that phone call got me a free kill, it got me defender cams, it got me valve cams, which got me actually cams into sight because they had a valve cam and con. So that's where those red pings were coming from. It sucks that my team died really fast. I wasn't really playing with them like I should have been, but that was a good example of how to solo as Dokibi.